Hey Nina. Hey. How are you? I am fine. Good. Good morning. But today is very easy. Yes. We already know what to do and we yes. are right there next to it. Yes. And we're not at solitude because yeah, ironically we don't have this at solitude. Yeah, it needs some open air and you know, it needs some open space mm. which is uh, which is hard to get in a farm other than in the fence. Mm. So that's why you know you see this a lot yes. in the fences. It's quite amazing this one, no? Yeah. It's like and you know, in the season, in the butterfly season, right around uh, you know December, mm. when there is a whole butterfly migration going on, you see this whole wall alive with butterflies. Right, it's beautiful. And, and which is also beautiful. another characteristic of weed flowers, no? So it it's so many what's, pollinators. What's its Latin name? It is, it is um, Antigone and Leptopus. Okay. And uh, like octopus. <laughs> okay. Okay. But uh, it is uh, Leptopus means delicate. Right. Huh? And the antigonon is the kind of angle, angular. You see how the ang yes, angle it yes, comes up? Yes, yes, yes. That's what it refers to. There are only about three species in this whole, you know, uh, you know, uh, in this species genre thing. Antigonon. There are three mm. uh, antigonon species. And all of them are originated in South America. Okay. South and Central America because okay. this is in Mexico. Um, but only this one is really well known to have traveled widely, mm. available everywhere. Right. And um, in South America, it is actually cultivated. And they use it for what? Eating. So Except what that are, we didn't What know. are they selling? The leaves or the they eating the leaves? Everything. So this is the this is Everything. the edible part. Everything. Everything is edible, not raw. It's uh, it's uh, it's edible, cooked, but you know it's nothing. It harm. won't kill me. No, it won't kill mm -hmm. you. Um, the flowers. But it's better as a as a spinach. Better, be, better as okay. a spinach. Mm. Better more up because you see the leaves are not that soft. No, right? they're a little hard. Yeah. So it's uh, young ones. You can eat it as spinach mm. like this at this stage. Mm. But if it becomes mature, what is actually happens like where it is used, they're batter fried and served with uh, other foods, served with soup. Okay. Are served with uh, pasta. Okay. So um, as a side. And how about the flowers? The flowers are, you know, they're all of course highly medicinal also. Mm. So the flowers, leaf, shoot, everything are used for, uh, you know, a tea mm. of that mm. for coughs and cold primarily. Just but put the the flowers in the a boiling water, leave it to steep. Steep. And drink that. Yeah, but the flowers you can also put it as uh, you know raw in a little uh, salad. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, you know also on you know topping <clears> of <throat> something. I also like uh, when it is encased in ice cubes and you put it in the drink. <coughs> beautiful. It's beautiful. It looks beautiful. And what are the medicinal values of this? Um, and so the leaf tea, just the leaf mm. tea, is very good for um, um, sugar balancing. Okay. And the whole like the any flowers, leaf shoots, anything. Tea of that is, um, you know, fights cough and cold. Okay. It's amazing. Antiseptic. Amazing. Um, not only that, this particular plant has every part used. Look at that bee. You see? The bee yeah, is coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's a fantastic pollinator. Mm. Um, so the roots are also edible. Okay. I've, I've read that, you know, it is, uh, even the raw is edible, but it's, you know, nobody quite knows because these are lost. Uh, knowledge. Lost knowledge, uh, yes. So, but the roots are actually cooked and can be eaten because it is called noxious weed. You see, mm. people are so interested in getting rid of them. So, yes. if you really so they want give to get a sort of a uh, bad label to it. <laughs> yeah. But so, you can't get rid of this. Yeah, so that's what. <laughs> so if you really want to get rid of it and, and a fruit, you can still eat the root. Right. Um, the seeds, for example, the seed. These are, you know, buckwheat family. Well, there are some seeds here. Look. Yeah. Look so these here. are buckwheat family. Achcha. Which means it is definitely edible seeds. So the seeds, once you know, um, you roasted, we know it, and ground. Yeah, it looks that, um, that, very similar. Yeah, that flour is actually edible. Edible flour. Achcha. It used to be e eaten, and I and I wondered why it is not really caught on everywhere. Mm. Um, it used to be the indigenous uh, food of the indigenous people okay. who lived in the Baja California area, Baja okay. California and Mexico. 
the so uh, Native Americans. Native Americans. They're right. So when that uh, culture kind of went away from the traditional lifestyle, this knowledge also well, kind of it went was, away. Well, uh, it was destroyed, we can say, <laughs> right. genocide. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that that uh, that knowledge also went away. Yeah, um, though to an extent it remains because they are cultivated, they are eaten some, but not the entire gamut. Yeah, of that's interesting how a cultural heritage, because it was alive, still you can find threads. You find it. threads of their culture, and that's beautiful. Yeah, and as you say, it's lost knowledge, and but the way to to bring a lost knowledge back is that we start using it yes, again. absolutely. So we're bringing that which is uh, in the past into the present And I, I do not know if my book had such an influence, but when I actually um, was making this, mm. I could not get any attention because each and every entry in this book mm. has peer-reviewed journal articles backing it. Right. And not just Google research. You know, right, of course, like of course. But I could not get a research paper based on that. So mm. you know, it was, I kept it aside and I had another one which is a substitute. Mm. But I really wanted to, you know, have this in. Mm. So one of my last try was that I read somewhere and there was a reference. I wrote to that and the next day I have to give it to the printer. Mm. So I wrote to that reference and my night. Mm. Uh, and I thought, you know, it's daytime somewhere else, wherever. It's EDU, so I thought it's mm. in the US. So uh, to a professor telling that if you really, I saw your name in relation to this, if you have any edible, you know, paper on edible quality of this, can you send me? That day... In 15 minutes' time, he sends me two papers. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's from where? He, he's originally from India. Okay. But he's, uh, you know, long time resident of uh, Florida. Okay. So he's in an university there, and his research actually involved this. So he sent me three papers. Two are his, and one is another okay. uh, another person's, which all talks about wow. <laughs> the edible How qualities. How beautiful. Yeah, so ethno ethnobotany of uh, you right. know, this, uh, this plant. Right. I think that's very interesting to, to note that for the people who use this book and... That it, that it has that weight of academia behind it. It's yes, not just yes, yes, yes. it's not just here saying, oh yeah, no. my grandma told this, which is actually very beautiful knowledge. Yeah. But it has got that right, right. that uh, that uh, weight behind it as well. Right. I mean, uh, I shouldn't say my grandma told me because that's actually where the real knowledge is. Yes, I mean, in this ethnobotany is yes, that. Yes, no? it you comes find from out, there. But yeah. also there is a. There is a systemized yes, uh, yes, yes, know, yes, could, definitely um, record of that. And after that, we have you know this book out. I now see a lot more websites now say this is edible, this is edible. Yes. That more chefs are because it's so beautiful, you know. Yes, yes. A uh, lot yes. of chefs are using it. Uh, Sarah yes. uses it. Well, I wanna uh, I wanna start harvesting these seeds, please. and I I'm gonna try and get these um get these seeds going in solitude today. Um, Let's you, see you know, if in, I can in, make them work. All you need is a little bit of cutting. It's be excellent I, in cutting. It will cutting. just come on its own. Yeah. Nice. It's, 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 um, one of the thing is that you know the seeds float. Okay. So apart from being, it's a very light, very easy to germinate. Mm. The seeds also float. So okay. in, and the animals and the birds and everybody likes it. So you okay. know the germination and the propagation of it is like Too taken easy. care of. <laughs> right. Right. Beautiful. <laughs> And the mother from from Shirobino Ashram, yeah. which is uh, our our founder of Oroville, she has called it Harmony, Harmony. which is a beautiful yes. name, so and for something that's so prolific, yes. that's a yes. that's a very uh, <laughs> yeah. auspicious. And it's good to have yeah. it here, a whole wall of it mm. in the in the center of administration building. Yeah, beautiful. Um, and uh, you know, it's such a pretty one, and yeah. that uh, that's why it's in the first in the book, like yeah. um, like. There's the first in the book. <coughs> yeah. Oh, I love how they've done the pictures. Yes. Very nice. So it's and it's very very characteristic of these leaves. You see, mm. That's very reticulated. Yes. It looks, yes. Looks wrinkly. Looks very hard, but it is not. I mean, mm, it's pretty soft mm, that way. Mm, mm. But I, I I have I have now know that several people have started eating it. Yes. Because it's easy to collect, no? Even if you yes. don't have any. Oh, I know home. people who eat it. Yeah, Definitely so. in the this community, their sonship. Yeah. They in the cafe, in their restaurant, in their um, their canteen yeah. for the residents. They use it regularly. Oh, yeah. Wow, nice. So here we go. Yes, there it so is. So the roots with nutty flavor, cooked mm. seeds as flour, once roasted, winnowed and ground. Nice. Yeah. 
and the flower tea and fruit soup batter fried in soup also it looks very nice some of the thai soups incorporates because thai soup has a tradition of using flower in their soup mm. no? jasmine mm. this thing so they use uh, the flowers okay. a lot in their soup i kind of thought how come you know it's used <coughs> in south america it's used in parts of africa how come it just skipped a whole continent and went to you know subcontinent yeah. and strange <laughs> went away but yeah. uh, but now you know Now we'll get there. <laughs> Now we'll get there. Nice. Well, thank you so much, Nina. Thank you. So, if you find this interesting, if you want to also join and find out how, how about this weeds and many more, and the future ones which are not in this book, then please join the crowdfunding initiative that we are launching. We need everyone's help, and look forward to uh, yeah. to to hearing from you all. Thank you very much, and see you in the next video.